Hey, it's CFTracking.com here for a quick review and comparison from the Coros Vertix to the Garmin Phoenix 6. Now, I'm gonna do a hands-on side-by-side, but I'm gonna reference the size of the Garmin Phoenix 6 standard model, not the 6S. So you'll see the 6S, and I'm gonna reference the size of the regular 6 so you can compare it because I really think those are the two head-to-head -head more accurate direct comparisons, although we're gonna look at the content and details between the two. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'm trying to build a subscriber base. Everything we're gonna talk about today is not gonna necessarily looking, look at the navigation aspects or the mapping aspects. We're gonna look primarily at the functional pieces that relate to CrossFit training or high intensity interval training things like that so that we have an accurate comparison for the purpose of this website or this YouTube channel. There are a lot of videos on all the different aspects or maybe differences between the running components of the two. So we're not gonna look at those specifically. We're gonna look at mostly things that apply to CrossFit training. Let's look at the hands-on and I'll come back for a summary. Okay, so we're gonna do this in two parts. First, looking at the hands-on of the watches and then going to the app to see some of the app differences. So again, I'm comparing the Vertix to the Phoenix 6 series. If you were to compare it in size, this is the 6S, so this is not gonna be as applicable. But when you just look at the Vertix, it has 47 millimeters, just like the Phoenix 6 standard, 16 millimeters thick, 22 millimeter lug, quick fit, if you look at the comparison between the backlight brightness for in the Garmin series, the Phoenix 6 across the line, and the Vertix, Garmin's about two times brighter. Um, so considerably more bright, and you can change and adjust the brightness, so you can see that probably just a little bit here. If I just turn the brightness on, this the Garmin's jacked up to 100%. Um, you can't tell as much there, but you can feel it day to day in the use. Uh, the Garmin's gonna be water resistant to 100 meters versus 150 on the Vertix. The Vertix has all sorts of crazy temperatures. You can go down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. That's pretty crazy. Um, I'm getting on the Phoenix 6, when I was using the regular standard, so I was getting about six and a half days of battery life versus 12 days of battery life on the uh, Vertix. And when I went to charge from like a total depletion, it was about three, two to three hours to charge the Phoenix 6 series. And one hour and 15 minutes at the most to charge the Vertex. That's incredible. Um, when it comes to watch faces, you know, you can you can adjust the watch faces on both without much of a problem. You can download a bunch of watch faces on Garmin, but I have found the watch faces built into the Vertex system to be pretty elaborate, pretty extensive. They both include sort of oddball things like compass, and there is some navigation features on the Vertex. We're not going to look at that because we're just going to look at the things that relate to CrossFit training and workouts and things like that. Um, but when you look at what each of them look like when you go into the watch. So the main widget pages, so you have your day at a glance, you have your heart rate, you have your altitude, barometric pressure, temperature, overall time of day, and then notifications. So those are the primary things you can access at a quick glance for like the overall widgets in built into the watch face versus on the Garmin, you have a laundry list. So you can add and adjust any of these things. Um, so you can go into multiple different components. You can change the order. You can add and take away. You can use third-party things. So tons more customization there. Um, and overall, just greater accessibility of multiple aspects in the Garmin system. So looking at the differences there, um, so that's the main pages you can see here. What does it show you as far as your training built into the watch itself? And then we'll look at the app. So you click into the main part from the watch face and you have all these different uh, profiles you can run through. I think it's like 12 or 15. You can obviously do multi-sport triathlon, um, pool swim, open swim, track run. You can see all the ones there, but when you go into the Garmin, you have, uh, you know, again, a C. Number one, you can customize. I just copied a cardio workout, retitled at CrossFit, set up the data pages the way I want them. So you can do all that in the Garmin itself, but you have all the primary ones. You can do weird things like set up the tides. Uh, you can play a game. And then you can go into a multitude of others and you can look at a million different profiles. And the thing that Garmin does really well is they have specialized the data aspects of each of these profiles. You can do bouldering, you can do mountain climbing, um, 
or rock climbing, you can do golf, you can test your, I don't even know how some of these things work, but you have a bunch of different aspects, but not just generic profiles, you have specificity to those things. So that's the main differences in the profiles available in the Garmin versus the verdicts. When you go into training, you really, you know, you can build a training plan, but the main thing I wanna talk about is your training metrics over time. So when you go in and have a hard workout, now I did a lot of yard work on Sunday that was considered my workout. I didn't work out yesterday, I haven't yet today. I'm gonna do it as soon as I get done with this video, but your stamina will decrease and then you'll see your recovery time at the bottom. So how much time you need to recover. When you go into the Garmin system to see those types of aspects, you can see it a couple of different places. The primary being your training status, but here you get just a lot more information and it's built in or at least designatable as a primary watch face widget. Um, so you can see your VO2 max, it combines all these things built into it, your load over the period of time. So there's no load tracking on the watch that you can see. You basically just get the recovery time aspect. So you can see what areas of focus you have in your workouts and then your recovery time. So again, same situation with not having worked out today. You get heat acclimation, things like that. And then you have some specialty widgets where you can go into and see your VO2 max in a little scale, um, lactase threshold and race specifics. But the other thing that you will lack as far as visibility on the watch itself within the verdicts is you can't see sleep. So you do get the recovery aspect. So you're either this much depleted from your overall impact of the last workout on your body and how much it's regenerating and then how much time to recover it. So if I had, you know, there's a couple of times where I had two days of recovery needed and it slowly inched up my stamina to where I was going to be back to 100% and recovery time is at zero. When you look at just the aspects in the Phoenix 6 series now that they've included uh, sleep tracking on the watch, you have that health and wellness aspect. So number one, you have the body battery, which tracks your heart rate variability over time or the amount of stress. And you can see specific areas of when you're high stress. But the biggest thing is how that has depleted your internal battery over time. That's a great health and wellness thing that's just lacking in the ecosystem with um, Chorus. And as well, you can see sleep. Not only does it give you the sleep aspects of the details, now you can get some of these same numbers on the app for the Chorus, but it's built into the watch here on now on the 6 Series of the Phoenix. Um, but you also get a sleep score, which tells you you had restorative sleep, so it gives you not only a quantifiable score about how you're sort of approaching, but and it, you know obviously all the details. Um, the only minor thing is that this will give you deep and REM, whereas the chorus will only just give you deep. And we'll look at it on the app so you can see what it looks like and how that works. But that's the main thing, health and wellness. You have sleep tracking built into the watch and obviously the app. And you have body battery tracking plus how they display the workout impact. You don't have load tracking on the watch. You can only see it in the app, whereas you do have it here in the Garmin. Um, so, when you go into workouts, what you see for a particular workout, so I just did what's called um, non-GPS cardio, it's what's called gym cardio. When you go into the stats, what you see in a workout here is you just get super simple stats. They don't give you a full laundry list of stats from the workout. Even though it's going to flow into the app, you only get to see like how long you worked out and how many calories you burned. You did get a nice little, you know, pretty graph, but it doesn't give you the full components like it could give you. Like if you take this just sort of short run that I did, they can obviously display it. If we look past the running stats, you can see the workout stats, the anaerobic, the aerobic threshold or training effect, I'm sorry, the anaerobic training effect, the recovery time from this particular workout. They don't show you that for gym cardio. They only show it for some of the specialized profiles. Whereas on the uh, Garmin, if I go into like a last workout, you can see all of the different stuff that we would see, um, or you, I feel like you should see. So this is that same workout, and you can see all stats, training effect, heart rate, laps, and the heart rate's just like a pretty, you know, doesn't show you the display of the graph over time. Training effect, you can go in, you can see the load uh, contribution plus the training effect metrics broken down in detail just off of the um off of the watch itself. So that's the difference in what is displayed from a workout summary when you go to look at it on your watch versus what's in the app. Um, so 
In all the training aspects, Garmin's still leading the way. They really have, are on target with Chorus, building some of these things like stamina, like recovery time built into the watch. Um, but they need to catch up on some of the other things like the load built in, some of the health and wellness built in, and definitely a better layout of the overall profiles. When you look at the settings, when I look at Coros, if I was just to go to you know the settings of different things, all these things are relatively similar from the Garmin to the Coros family. You have a couple specialty things like night mode, which is always on dim, um, but timer, watch face adjustments, alarm, these are very similar. So the settings experience hasn't been that significant of a difference. You have a different approach to how they design their, um, their deep dive menus, but overall, um, that's the difference. So battery usage, you know, definitely getting a lot longer. It's been incredible. Um, this is another thing, the SPO2, I just feel like not relevant for day-to-day -day use. It's maybe good because obviously if you're over 8250 and feet elevation, it'll start tracking it more accurately or more continually. But overall, it doesn't have any value to day-to-day -day use, um, which is something I think they can improve because they have the sensor built in there. Um, so let's look at it on the app and then we'll come back for a summary. Okay, so looking at the aspects of each of the apps, I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list. I'm just going to show you some of the basic comparisons. This is the landing page for the Chorus app, and you can see all your daily components up at the top plus your longer training components at the bottom. If you go to the tabs on the bottom, you'll see your workout log history. You'll see some of the training plan development that you can do as well as connections to other um, aspects, your muscle heat map, and then within the watch. Um, different things you can customize, like the workout data. This is similar but different than Garmin's. They've definitely, I think, done a better job with you know how you change the workout data that you're displayed. You can still see the six units of information displayed just like you can on the Garmin system, Garmin family. So um, and you go into Garmin, you obviously have a little bit different of a landing page. You can adjust where each of these things sit and are positioned when you go into the app every day. But let's just look at the primary training components. Um, so when you go into, let's just look at a specific activity and we'll just compare the two. So this got the title of CrossFit because I changed the profile and gave it a specific title. So you'll see this particular information. So you get the, the stats of the training effect there. Whereas if you compare it to the stats that you'll see from a training aspect, in the Chorus system. So Chorus does a great job laying it out. They should put this information in the watch. So you can see the data points in the watch, but they don't yet have that built for the gym cardio aspect or profile. But all the primary things you'd wanna see, they do a great job with this training effect in the middle. You get the sort of the graph or the circle bar for aerobic training effect and anaerobic. So you can see both aspects across time, whereas you can see the same thing on the Garmin. Um, the training effect right here in the middle. You get respiration rate, which is a nice little additional feature, elevation, temperature. Temperature doesn't have much relevance. Time in the heart rate zones at the bottom and the heart rate graph at the top are gonna be the same on both devices, especially if you're connecting either one to a chest strap like both of these were. So usefulness in a workout or for a workout analysis and summary, the training effect is great. Um, like we saw on the watch, one thing that's interesting about both of these families of watches is that neither one shows the recovery time in the app. So you can only see recovery time. That recovery time lives in the watch and can only be seen on the watch. Um, but when you compare, so now you've got your workout done and you look at the load. So there's something that you'll see. We'll look at it first on the Garmin to see what the load looks like. So here... In the top part, I just have set it to be the main item is the training status right at the top. So you click into training status and you'll get some specifics, especially when it comes to the Phoenix series um, for the types of aspects you can see. So you can see you know, the summary of your VO2 max over time, your heat acclimation over time, your load over time. And we'll just see first here, you can see the types of areas that you're high in and low in. So types of workouts, you can see what each day contributed to either high or low end, you know, highly aerobic, lowly aerobic, or anaerobic. But the main thing is this chart here. So it shows the accumulation over time, and you can hold your finger there, and you can see the accumulation over a period of time and the decline over a period of time. So you can see that the load built, and because I didn't track my, I don't know, my 
shoveling yard work on Sunday and obviously didn't work out Monday and haven't yet worked out today, you can see what the load builds and accumulates over time versus what we see here in this middle part in the training load. I'm gonna break it down to the side so you can break this chart out and it'll show you each of the hills as you see them. So again, you can see, you know, when you don't work out, it's low. Oh, I worked out that day, it went up. Back down to low because I didn't work out that day. Then it went up, but you can see this seesaw it does not show an accumulation of load. Like maybe the bottom numbers are slightly changing from 12 to 18 to 18 to 19, but it is not showing an accumulation of load over time. It's just showing that you worked out that day and then, oh great, you did that day and then you did that day. So it's not helpful in really developing a training plan versus what you see here. It's giving you an optimal green zone and it's showing you accumulation over time, not just that you worked out that day and didn't work out the next. So the load aspects need to uh, be developed. So um, some of these other things I talked about in the full review, the fitness index, the fitness level, the VO2 max was coming in last you know, little short run I did put your Garmin having at 46 and this had 45. So not too far off there. I don't find any, you know, this is where you would, you know, look at all the watch faces again. You know, there's a million watch faces on Garmin Connect, but I think all of these are all you would really need. You don't get to need, need to get into the weeds of downloading a bunch of stuff. Um, the strength training aspect needs to really grow. So you can load a training plan, which is great. You can build a workout like you can see here, but building the workout was not very easy and putting all these in. And then when you look at the workout aspects, when I got done with it, um, if I can find it, um, it showed a heat map, but the heat map did not reflect all of the movements. The heat map only reflected Okay, so here's one. So I think this is that same workout, and you can see the burpees and the kettlebells. So here's the heat map. Okay, glad I found it. The There was a million burpees in this workout, but it only gave me credit for the kettlebell swings, I think. So it gave me credit for glutes and quads, but I should have had some credit. Maybe they can differentiate by color so that I can see that my whole body is actually pretty exhausted and my, all my muscles were hit or affected, not just the two areas that happen to be very focused lifting movements or focused areas. So the way that Cora says it, they um, only the, the total body movements like a burpee don't get credit to the heat map. I think that needs to grow. And then the only thing you don't see here, you don't see training effect. So the strength program, when you build the program and you go through a workout on the watch, it doesn't give you training effect credit. Like you don't get an aerobic or anaerobic score. You don't get recovery time and you don't get it contributed to your uh, training load overall. So you can build your workout, but it's not yet fully developed for CrossFit training, unfortunately. So overall, looking at the main aspects, you do get all the main things. The last thing I'll touch on is the recovery and wellness or just the overall wellness. So you see here in the middle, the sleep metrics. So you click into that. And again, you get this, you get this big page. You can see when you were good sleep, bad sleep, awake, awake. So these metrics might be perfect, but it doesn't help me tell how ready I am for the next workout, ready I am for the next day. And the picture, the, the visual display of it is not very helpful. Whereas on the Garmin, you can go in and you can see a bunch of different aspects. Number one, you have the body battery aspect, which shows your regeneration over time. So you look at that over the course of the night, I'm regenerating because my stress level was down and regenerated my overall internal battery. So that is a huge benefit. And then in the sleep, just the minor benefit. You don't get the sleep score yet built into the app. It's built into the watch, but you can see this. You can see your pulse ox throughout the night to see if you had any breathing issues. You can see your respiration rate. Those don't always translate into a quantifiable value that's actually beneficial, but they're there from a a visual understanding of like how I slept, you can track your movement so you can turn the movement picture on and see how much you moved around versus, you know, again, so you can see this versus the sleep aspect there. And then you turn it to its side and it just gets even less visually useful. Um, so the recovery and wellness needs to develop. The, straining, the strength training program needs to develop in this training load needs to develop. So let's get into a summary. I just wanted to do a quick side-by-side. -side. Okay, now in summary, looking at the chorus verdicts, I think they have an incredibly good platform upon which they can build. 
A number of things that I really liked about the verdicts, the overall weight and feel, the build quality is superb. It actually feels lighter and just, it just feels smoother than the Garmin Fenix 6, the full 83 gram regular watch. Um, everything about it looks like, this feels like it's been built in a more balanced way than a top heavy Garmin Fenix 6. I like the buttons. I do like the rotating bezel. I like the auto lock feature. Um, I like the watch faces. I like the way that they have a bunch of, I mean, there's 47 to choose from. I personally don't need to look through everything on the Garmin Connect store. You can upload a million there for Garmin, but I think that the watch faces they make available are well laid out, cool, and everything you could need. Um, you, the, the things that are really good on the training side, I really like their training effect, how they do the aerobic and anaerobic like Garmin. It's a little bit different scoring style or scoring system, but I like that they're doing that so you can see the different aspects of your training. I think the recovery time has been pretty on point and really good there. Obviously with Coros, the battery is incredible, doubling that of the Phoenix 6 as well as the charge time decreasing that by 50%, so half the charge time, twice the life. That is amazing, I don't know how they do it. Minor things that I would want to see changed, obviously the clarity and the brightness give me the control to ramp up the brightness and give me a little bit less washed out screen. But the biggest things I think they need to work on are the things that need to change to really be truly competitive. Number one, the sleep and wellness aspects. So the sleep analysis, maybe some sort of score, definitely a prettier graph and maybe some sort of wellness aspect like the body battery. Number two, the load tracking. So you can see your accumulation of load over time. It's just not helpful currently in the Cora system. Number three, the watch management overall, like the primary screens of information, the primary widgets you might call them, that you have just off of the main rotation sort of down the line from the watch face. And then somewhat of the placement of the information, the AI trainer having your recovery time is not, in my opinion, the best place to keep that primary information. That should be a main widget on the main screen. Pulse ox. So if they could just you know, coordinate pulse ox in some more relevant way, although it's great that it's there for high altitude climbs for those of you guys doing that. I just think it's not, it's not as relatively useful of a data point for maybe like sleep. They could add it to their sleep development. And then last is the strength training. They obviously are starting with a great platform, but they need to expand two things. Number one, the heat map. The heat map only takes into account the concentrated body part movements that are focusing on a muscle. And if you do something like burpees, which you know I've shown you in the other videos that I did like 150 burpees all in the course of the workout, and it gave me no, no credit to my heat map because it's considered an all body movement. They should give you some credit, maybe differentiating it by color, like light red for where you hit all your body. And maybe if you do a bunch of total body, it should still go bright red, but then maybe a bright red for the times when you're just doing goblet squats, something like that. Secondly, within the strength training, they gotta have the strength training components flow through to a training effect, recovery time, and load, and right now they don't. And then they've got to enhance the platform for how you build your workouts in the strength training um, aspect. So overall, that's the primary comparison, sort of head to head. Garmin is definitely still the industry leader when it comes to the most premium sports watch tracking, but Coros is a definite up and comer. I'm really excited to see how they develop things going forward. CFTracking.com, thanks so much for watching.